ओम ज्ञानति मिरंदस्य ज्ञानांजनाशलाखाय चक्षुरुं मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टं स्थापितं येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मय्यं ददाति स्वपदांतिकं वंदेहं श्री गुरुन श्रीयुत पदकमलं श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश श्री रूपं सागरजाता सहगण रघुनाथां वितं तम सजीवं साधवैत सार्वदूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखां विता नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी निति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकलपतृभ्य कृपा सिंधून च पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस वेनसडे क्लास आई अपोलॉजाइज फॉर द लास्ट वेनसडे आई वॉज इन बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड आई एब्सोल्युटली कंप्लीटली जस्ट फॉर गॉट about the class i forgot even to message because from morning 6 o'clock we were out for book distribution and i just skipped from my mind so apologize for the same so from today we are going to start from shloka number 20 i guess <clears throat> let me share you the screen yeah अथ व्यवस्थित दृष्ट्वा धारतराष्ट्रन कपी ध्वज प्रवृत्ते शास्त्र संपाते धनुर्द्मा पांडव ऋषिकेश तदा वाक्यम इहम इदम आहा मही पते दिशा प्लीज रीड द ट्रांसलेशन एंड दोपिट Yeah, now you can unmute yourself and read. Ah, uh, yeah. Translation: At that time, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, seated in the chariot, hearing the flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra, drawn in military array, Arjuna then spoke to Lord Krishna. these words purport by shri la prabhupad the battle was just about to begin it is understood from the above statement that the sons of dhritarashtra were more or less disheartened by the unexpected arrangement of military force by the pandavas who were guided by the direct instructions of lord krishna on the battle field the emblem of hanuman on the flag of arjuna is another sign of victory because hanuman cooperated with lord rama in the battle between rama and ravana and lord rama emerged victorious now both rama and hanuman were present on the chariot of arjuna to help him lord krishna is rama himself and wherever lord rama is his eternal servitor hanuman and his eternal consort sita the goddess of fortune are present therefore arjuna had no cause to fear any enemies whatsoever 
and above all the lord of the senses lord krishna was lord krishna was personally present to give him direction thus all good counsel was available to arjuna in the matter of executing the battle in such auspicious conditions arranged by the lord for his eternal devotee lay the signs of assured victory hari krishna yeah thank you disha thank you so much so over here in this uh, particular text in this shloka text this the atmosphere is completely surcharged the world's most powerful kshatriyas uh, you know had gathered to fight and uh, filled with you know spirit spirit of battle now this war was deferred from the situation shila prabhupad you know criticized in the 1960s when the you know united states drafted students and not kshatriyas and you know forced them into battle these men were fighting men now, fighting was in their blood so just as devotees come to vrindavan or mayapur from all around the world these kshatriyas came from all over the world you know to this place called kurukshetra to fight and they had faith that dying on the battlefield would gain them entrance into the heavenly planets so now the two armies were in formation the conchas were the conchas blew the hair of the warriors stood on end in anticipation krishna was with arjuna on his chariot now hanuman's you know hanuman decorating the chariot flag was ready to shout his war cries to help bhima terrify the whole army so in uh, mahabharat uh, it had been described that a meeting between you know hanuman and bhima was there because once while arjuna was uh, seeking celestial weapons the the remaining pandavas they were wandering around this badrika ashram high in the himalayas and suddenly this alaknanda river that is there in the himalayas it carried uh, you know to draupadi a very beautiful and a fragrant thousand petal lotus flower so draupadi was very captivated by its beauty and scent so she said to bhima that bhima this lotus flower is so beautiful i sh- i should offer it to yudhishthir maharaj could you get me a few more so we could take this back to the hermitage of uh, this uh, kamya so bhima immediately what did he do with his gada he grabbed and charged up the hill where uh, no mortals were permitted and he ran and bellowed the frightened elephants and lions so what he uprooted the trees and he pushed them aside so as soon as you uh, enter the class please mute yourselves immediately because that disturbs the whole class so okay so then uh then you know he was uprooting these trees and he pushed them aside not caring for these ferocious beasts that were there in the jungle and he climbed the mountain and uh, you know he he you know he was climbing mountain but then there was a very huge monkey was lying across the path so then uh, he was saying that uh, the monkey said that uh, why are you making so much noise and you know scaling scaring all the animals so the monkey said that please just sit down and eat some fruits so bhima was a little in an angry mood he said move aside you know uh, for the etiquette forbade him to step over the monkey he could have actually stepped over the monkey and he would have died so then the monkey is replying that you know i am too old to move you know jump over me so bhima became again very angry uh, you know and repeated his order but this monkey you know again was pleading that okay i am very too old to you know weak i cannot move myself uh, you please move this tail aside and then you can cross over so bhima had very unlimited power and he was very very powerful so what did he do he tried to grab the tail and uh, you know put it aside but he failed in that and he was very amazed to see that so he respectfully you know inquired to the monkeys uh, you know that who are you and from where are you and he was overjoyed to learn that he had met his you know brother hanuman for because bhima and hanuman were both the sons of vayu 
so hanuman first you know embraced bhima and showed him the huge you know his huge form in which he leaped to the lanka and then uh, he offered bhima the you know he's offering bhima some blessings he saying that uh, whenever you will be you know fighting in the kurukshetra war i shall always uh, remain present on the flag of your brother arjuna and when you roar like a lion on the battlefield my voice will also join with yours to strike terror to the hearts of the other enemies and you will be victorious and you will again regain back your kingdom now in this particular shloka again arjuna uh, you know uh, his chariot is driven by krishna and marked with the flag of hanuman he is picked up his bow the horses and elephants very moved excitedly the opening arrows of the long awaited battle were you know now to be released and arjuna just on the brink of the battle now is speaking the following words so in the next shloka actually uh, you know arjuna will start speaking so i'll just share the screen for the next shloka okay arjun uvach so this arjuna is telling to whom arjuna is telling to shri krishna okay this him senayor ubhayor madhe ratam sthapaya me achyuta yavat etan rikshaham yodhu kaman avasthitan kermaya sah yodhavyam asmin rana samudhyame so arjuna said that o oh, infallible one so this word over here infallible means what the lord's name is achuta means what one who does not fall down from his position to give affection to his devotees that is the meaning of you know achuta or infallible o oh, infallible one please draw my chariot between the two armies so that i may see those present here who desire to fight and with whom i must contend in this great trial of arms uh sushil prabhu please read this uh, whole purport hari krishna mata hari krishna although lord krishna is the supreme personality of god and out of his boundless mercy he was engaged in the service of his friend he never fails to in his affection for his devotees and thus he addressed here in as infallible as charioteer he had to carry out the orders of arjuna and since he did not hesitate to do so he is addressed as infallible although he had accepted the position of a charioteer for his duty his supreme position was not challenged in all circumstances he is the supreme person of god at rishikesha the lord of total senses the relationship between the lord and his servitor is very sweet and transcendental the servitor is always ready to render service to the lord and similarly lord is always seeking an opportunity to render serv- some service to the devotee he takes great greater pleasure at his as he is in his pure devotees assuming the advantageous position of ordering him then he does in being the giver of orders since he is master everyone is under his orders and no one is above him to order him but when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him he obtains transcendental pleasure although he is the infall- infallible master in all circumstances hari krishna mata ji should i proceed yes 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 go as a pure devotee of the lord arjuna had no desire to fight with his cousins and brothers but he was forced to come into the battlefield by his obstinacy of duryodhana who was never agreeable to any peaceful negotiation therefore he was very anxious to see who the leading person present on the battlefield was although there was no question of a peacemaking and they were on the battlefield he wanted to see them again and to see how much they were bent up on demanding an unwanted war hari krishna mata ji thank you thank you prabhu ji so much so actually we are going a little in details with uh, the bhagavad gita so most of you all must be thinking that uh, i'm going shloka to shloka but uh, because of the request of the devotees we are going in detail deep details of these texts 
and I'm taking text to text. Generally, uh, most of these speakers, they will go with, uh, you know, sections of the Bhagavad Gita, but I'm going, you know, shloka to shloka in deep details. So if you see in this particular section of, uh, you know, of this particular section from starting from 21 to 27, uh, Krishna as Bhakta Vatsala or Krishna as the, uh, you know, the lover of his devotees, you could say, is being shown over here. So if I uh, is there is a common theme over here which says that uh, Arjuna is requesting uh, the infallible Lord, that is Achyuta, to draw his chariot in the middle. Why is he asking that please draw these chariots in the middle of the battlefield? So he wants to see who are the leading men present with a desire to fight and to please the evil-minded, you know, son of Dhritarashtra or, or Duryodhan. So over here, the meaning, the very meaning of the word Achuta means infallible, infall, F-A-L-L, -L, fallible means one who never fails in affection for his devotees. And thus, he is engaged in the service of his devotees also out of his causeless mercy. Over here, he is engaged in the service of his friend. And why is he engaged in the service of uh, Arjuna? Because he is showing his causeless mercy towards Arjuna. Also, being a chauffeur or a driver of Arjuna, he did not hesitate to carry out the order of Arjuna as his charioter. Somebody whose ego might be just puffed up, he might think that, oh, you know, I am the supreme person of Godhead. How dare you order me? But no, because he was uh, completely, uh, you know, under the this of his devotees. So he did not mind also. He immediately took the chariot in between the two armies. Also, though he is the chauffeur or the driver of Arjuna, his position as the Rishikesha or the master of the senses does not change or uh, the lord as you know the lord uh, the lord as uh, rishikesha or the lord of the senses his position was not challenged it was unchallenged nobody can challenge the position of krishna even if he tries to challenge then he'll be smashed like for example indra tried to challenge his position brahma tried to challenge his position but ultimately what happened they were actually, you know, their egos were smashed. So over here now, there is a very sweet relationship between the Lord and his devotees. And the relationship between the Lord and his devotees are always transcendental. Why? Because a devotee is always eager to serve the Lord. And the Lord he obtains transcendental pleasure in receiving these orders of his pure devotees. Although he is unfallible, he is the supreme master. But the Lord does not mind doing even menial, you know, jobs or work for his own devotees. So then now, somebody, now a question might raise over here is that, why Arjuna asked to move the chariot in between or in midst of the army? So Arjuna actually was firstly forced to fight against his wish because, uh, you know, Duryodhana was too much, uh, you know, obstinate that he wanted to fight. Also, Arjuna was anxious to see, uh, you know, who were the leading men present with a desire to fight and to please Duryodhan, because uh, they say you know, that the birds of the same feather flock together. Also, uh, he wanted to see how much they were bent upon fighting, because initially Krishna went with a peace messenger. He went as a peacemaker, but they did not want to, you know, make peace, and they did not want to give any. A land as equal as the tip of a needle also. So they were pretty much bent on fighting also. And also whenever you are on the battlefield, you want to estimate the strength. Uh, he wanted to actually estimate the strength uh, which uh, he had to face. Although he was confident of this victory because Krishna was sitting on his side. But uh, he had no intentions of making peace also at the moment. So that is why he is telling Krishna that please take this chariot uh, in in between the two you know armies, and that's where uh, this particular shloka says that how is he taking like. So let's go to the next shloka.
Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil minded son of Dhritarashtra. Who will read this translation? Uh, Ravi Chhabra Prabhu, uh, please read this purport. Yes, I am there. Thank you. Yeah, read this purport, Prabhu. Yeah, on the screen, please read this purport, Ravi Chhabra Prabhu. I'm not having my specs, so difficult for me to read. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not know that. Um, Sonal Pawar, are you there? Or you can read the puppet. Okay, Disha, please read the puppet. Hare Krishna. Uh, puppet by Srila Prabhupada. It was an open secret that Duryodhan wanted to usurp the kingdom of the Pandavas by evil plans in collaboration with his father Dhritarashtra. Therefore, all persons who had joined the side of Duryodhan must have been birds of the same feather. Arjuna wanted to see them on the battlefield before the fight was begun just to learn who they were, but he had no intention of proposing peace negotiations with them. It was also a fact that he wanted to see them to make an estimate of the strength which he had to face. Although he was quite confident of victory because Krishna was sitting by his side. Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, over here, I've just discussed these points where, uh, you know, he wanted to estimate the, this. Now, after Arjuna took, told Krishna to take uh, the two chariots on in between the two armies, now over here, in this particular shloka, Sanjay who is sitting in the palace is now going to give a running commentary actually, live commentary that what is happening. So now what is Sanjay saying? Let's see. Sanjay vacha evam mukto rishi kesho guda kesha na bharata sena yor obhayor madhe thapa yitva yarathottama Translation, Sanjay said, O oh, descendant of Bharata, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both the parties. Sushil Prabhu, please read this puppet. If anybody would like to read the puppet, you all can raise your hands. We'll give you a chance to read, okay? In yeah, these verse, sorry, Master. Yeah, you can go ahead, Prabhu. Yes, go ahead. In these verse, Arjuna is referred to as Gurikesha. Gurika, Guraka means sleep, and one who conquers sleep is called Gurakesha. Sleep also means ignorance. So Arjuna conquered both sleep and ignorance because of his friendship with Krishna. As a great devotee of Krishna, he could not forget Krishna even for a moment because that is the nature of a devotee. Either in the waking or in sleep, a devotee of Lord can never be free from the thinking of Krishna's name, form, qualities, and persons. Thus, a devotee of Krishna can conquer both sleep and ignorance simply by thinking of Krishna constantly. This is called Krishna consciousness or samadhi. As Rishikesha or the director of the senses and, and mind of every living entity, Krishna could understand Arjuna's purpose in placing the chariot in the midst of the armies. Thus, he did so and spoke as follows. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So, actually, you know, Krishna is talking. So, over here, there is a nice word called Gudakesha. Okay. So, Gudakesha means sleep and one who conquers the sleep is called Gudakesha. So, uh, why is Arjuna called Gudakesha? Arjuna is called Gudakesha because Arjuna had conquered sleep also. And Arjuna conquered his ignorance also. And how he was able to conquer these both things 
because sometimes some people you know they sleep very ferociously if they're sleeping they're sleeping for 12 12 hours so and uh, sometimes people are very ignorant ignorant means what they do not know their relationship with the lord they do not know who i am and what is the purpose of my life or where did i come from or where do i have to go so they are completely ignorant about themselves also and they are completely ignorant about the supreme lord and the relationship between them and the supreme lord so that is called mode of ignorance so now any person who has conquered his sleep and who has conquered the mode of ignorance and move towards the mode of goodness and who has made friendship with krishna now he is he is eligible to call a very very good devotee and he can make friendship with krishna also he can be friends with krishna also he can be very intimate with krishna also so now over here though arjuna is a great devotee of krishna uh, he could not forget krishna for a moment why because once when uh, now i have told this actually instance many a times uh, because there are many other bhagavad gitas also running parallelly in other places also of mine so maybe in the recording we'll hear the same story so once upon a time when during this only battle of kurukshetra where uh, you know when everybody is sleeping in their own tents krishna wanted to discuss something about the next day's war with arjuna and uh, uh krishna was trying to actually find arjuna but he was not able to find but krishna is saying where is this noise coming from or where is this voice my name being you know uh called out from because he could hear his name krishna 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 so krishna is finding everywhere who is calling out my name who is calling out my name and all of a sudden he reaches the you know the tent of arjuna in his own personal uh, you know you can say bedroom like thing and uh, there he is again hearing arjuna is sleeping but krishna is hearing his own name krishna 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 then he is going around and checking everywhere to where is this you know uh, soft voice coming from and then when he went very close and he put his ear on the uh, back of uh, arjuna he was able to hear his own name krishna krishna which means what from every pore of arjuna the name of krishna was being called out and that is why they say that he could not forget krishna even for a moment so even in his sleeping state he was remembering krishna that is why if you see this either in his waking or in sleep a devotee of the lord can never be free from thinking of krishna's name form past and qualities this is what actually is depicting over here now what to speak of arjuna whoever is a pure devotee or who is in a normal devotee they can also not forget krishna even for a moment while they are cooking while they are walking while they are talking while they are in their office while they are you know sitting somewhere while they are in the bus air flight train four wheeler two wheeler wherever they are traveling the devotee the pure devotees of the lord cannot forget krishna even for a moment and thus because of this thing because the pure devotee can remember krishna 24 by 7 he is able to conquer both sleep and ignorance thinking uh, uh simply by thinking about krishna so here is a key if i want to so here is a key what if anybody wants to conquer his sleep and ignorance what he should be doing he should be thinking of krishna constantly very simple and this is called krishna consciousness krishna consciousness if i translate this in hindi is krishna ki chetna mein hamesha rehna aur samadhi samadhi means what you are thinking about that particular person you close your eyes and you meditate on the you know sweet form of the lord on every limb of the lord and then you try to see how i can serve the lord also so then uh, then what is the result if i'm thinking about krishna constantly then 
Rishikesha or the director of the senses and mind of every living entities, Krishna understood Arjuna's purpose in placing the chariot in the midst. So when you are able to constantly think about Krishna uh, or Rishikesha, then the Lord is also from that side reciprocating with us. He immediately we, he will understand that you are remembering him. Immediately the Lord understands that you have called him out. Immediately, because see, we have five senses, right? We'll be learning more about this in the second chapter. But with all our senses, if we are actually trying to, rem uh, you know, trying to remember Krishna all the time, which means what we are actually in Samadhi, we are trying to all the time be Krishna conscious. And that is why Srila Prabhupada named this particular society as International Society for Krishna Consciousness. He did not say that International Society for God Consciousness. He specifically used the word Krishna Consciousness. So, and why Krishna Consciousness? We'll be establishing this in the next uh, coming text also. Okay, let's go to the next text. Okay. Bhishma Drona Pramukhata Sarvesha Cha Mahikshitam Vacha Partha Pashyaitan Samo Vetan Kuru Iti. In the presence of Bhima, Drona, and all other chieftains of the world, the Lord said, Just behold Partha, all the Kurus assembled here. So, see, the Lord starts speaking from the you know, previous shlokas, okay? So that's the first appearance of the Lord in that particular shloka. Let me just show you the previous shloka. So over here, Arjuna is speaking, but now the Lord has started speaking from here. This is the first appearance of the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. All the super soul As the super soul of all living entities, Lord Krishna could understand what was going on in the mind of Arjuna. See, the super soul. There is this word called super soul. I'll just explain you the meaning of the word super soul. Let me just finish through this puppet. The use of the word Rishikesha in this connection indicates that he knew everything. And the word Partha meaning the son of Pritha or Kunti is also similarly significant in reference to Arjuna. As a friend, he wanted to inform Arjuna that because Arjuna was the son of Pritha, the sister of his own father, Vasudev, he had agreed to be the chariot of Arjuna. Now, what did Krishna mean when he told Arjuna to behold the Kurus? Did Arjuna want to stop there and not fight? Krishna never expected such things from the son of his aunt, Pritha. The mind of Arjuna was thus predicted by the Lord in friendly joking. So now, just as a friend, Krishna is also actually joking with, see, so, so much such a big, huge army. You have to fight in front of this big, huge army. This is what Krishna is trying to say. So over here, there is a word called super soul. For some of you, this word super soul might be a bit new. So you, all, you all might think that what is this word called super soul. But super soul meaning is that in my heart, there are two living beings. Okay, One is the super soul, that is the Lord himself. And then one is myself, that I am the soul. And uh, the soul and the super soul, they always accompany each other. The super soul who is Krishna does not leave the uh, the atma or the soul even for a nanosecond one billionth of a second also he does not leave wherever uh, the soul is the super soul is always accompanying him as his ever well wishing friend so now in this uh, 25th shloka the lord is placing the chariot in front of bhishma and drona and the lord is called arjuna uh, the lord sorry the lord is called rishikesha why because the Lord knows Arjuna's mind and thus knows everything about every living entity as the super soul of all living entities. So 
Arjuna is also referred over here as Partha because uh, Partha is indicating that he is the son of uh, Arjuna is the son of his aunt Pritha, and Krishna wants to point out that see, I became your charioteer because uh, you are the son of my aunt Queen Kunti. Krishna said to Arjuna that you know, see, behold the Kurus. So uh, he is indirectly by actually this uh, this particular statement or this phrase, he's saying that. Uh, do you want to st uh, stop or, uh, you know, not fight? So he was uh, sarcastically actually framing this phrase. So Krishna is not expecting a cowardly action from uh, his aunt's son, that is Arjuna. But he is in a mood of, you know, just friendly joking and he just wants to joke around with his friend. So now... You know that uh, in this 25th shloka, he's joking. But now in the next uh, two shlokas, Arjuna is seeing all the relatives that are assembled on both the armies. Let's check out. Give me a minute. Oh, what exactly happened? I just lost the screen. Uh, just give me one minute. I just lost the screen somewhere. Many times this technology just tricks you. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. 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 So in this particular shloka, in the translation, the Arjuna could see within the midst of the armies, both of the parties, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, and also his father-in-law and well-wishers. Uh, Rupaji, please read this puppet. Hare Krishna. On the battlefield, Arjuna could see all kinds of relatives. He could see persons like Burish Prava, Hmm. who were his father's contemporaries, grandfathers Bhishma and Somadatta, teachers like Dronacharya and Kripacharya, maternal uncles like Shalya and Shakuni, brothers like Duryodhana, sons like Lakshmana, friends like Aswatthama, well-wishers like Kritavarma. Kritavarma, etc. He could see also the armies which contained many of his friends. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now over here in this particular thing, he's just seeing, you know, who all are there in both the sides. On his side also and the other side also. Tan samiksha sakonteya sarvan bandhum avasthitan kripaya paraya vishto vishidantim mabravi so when the son of Kunti Arjuna saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and thus spoke. Now Arjuna is going to start speaking, okay? So from here, this particular text, that is the 28th text, now Arjuna starts speaking. Now he is into a dilemma, okay? So... There is a lot of suspense coming in that will he fight, will he not fight. So, Arjun Uvacha Trishtam Mevam Svajanma Krishna Yuyutsum Samupastitam Siddhanti Mama Gatrani Mukham Cha Parishushati. 
Arjuna said, my dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up. So, Arjuna is completely in a dilemma over here. Somebody else would like to read this purport? Anjusha or Arjuna, anybody would like to read this? Anjusha, read. Yes, Mataji. Hare Yes. Any man who, who has genuine devotion to the Lord has all the good qualities which are found in godly person or in the demigods, whereas the non-devotee, however advanced he may be in material qualifications by education and culture, lacks in godly qualities. As such, Arjuna, just after seeing his kin, uh, kinsmen, friends and relatives on the battlefield was at once overwhelmed by compassion for, for them who had so decided to fight among themselves as far as his soldiers were concerned. He, he was sim sympathetic from the beginning, but he felt compassion even for the soldiers for, of the opposite party for foreseeing their imminent death and while he was so thinking the limbs of his body began to queer and his mouth became dry he was more or less astonished to see <clears throat> their fighting spirit practically the whole community all blood relatives of arjuna had come to fight with him this overwhelmed a kind devotee like arjuna although it is not mentioned here Still, one can easily imagine that not only were Arjuna's bodily limbs quivering and his mouth drying up, but he was also crying out of compassion. Such symptoms in Arjuna were not due to weakness, but to his soft heart heartedness, a characteristic of a pure deity of the Lord. It is said, therefore, I'll read this. Yes, Siddhi Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchana Sarvair Gunas Tatra Samasate Sure Harau Abhakta Sekoto Mahad Guna Mano Rathena Sti Dhavato Bhi. Yeah, now read from here. Read from here. One who has unflinching devotion for the personality of Godhead has all the good qualities of the demigods. But one who is not a devotee of the Lord has only material qualifications that are of little value. This is because he is overing, overing on the mental plane and is certain to be attracted by the glaring material energy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So this particular uh, shloka that is there, that... Yeah, Arjuna is actually uh, speaking over here. He says that, uh, you know, I'm seeing now he's become very weak. Okay. From this particular 20th shloka, he is seeing all his relatives, all his kingsmen. He's seeing everybody. He's seeing, uh, you know, his grandfather also. He's seeing everybody, his teachers, brothers, friends, you know, those who are his friends also, those who are his enemies. He's seeing everybody. So, from this particular shloka, Arjuna will be giving five arguments not to fight this particular battle. And what are those five arguments? The first argument that he'll, you know, he's making that firstly, he'll have compassion. And because of compassion, he says, I don't want to fight. The second one, he's saying that loss of enjoyment, that what is the use of me fighting? When, you know, after killing so many people, I will not have any enjoyment. Also, third thing he's thinking that, you know, he has a fear of sinful reactions. If I kill them, then I'll also be incurring some sinful reactions. The fourth thing he's thinking that there will be a lot of uh, destruction in the family traditions. That there'll be Varna, Varna Shankara's born or, you know, every, you know, all these men, their wives will become widows and all. 
and the last thing he was he was having indecision he was indecisive that he did not he did not uh, know what to do whether i should fight or whether i should quit the battle so all these five arguments that arjuna is making so krishna will refute this argument from the second chapter onwards krishna will now start defining certain things that what is the definition of compassion what is the definition of fear and why should and fear how fear should be uh, whether it should be a healthy fear or whether it should be a, a, you know not healthy fear so in this particular uh, text if you see uh, there are nine signs of compassion that arjuna is exhibiting just give me so nine uh, signs of compassion arjuna is exhibiting and what is he exhibiting firstly his limbs are quivering means what kampan ho rahi hai uske sare sharir mein kampan ho rahi hai he's, he's trembling or uh, you know he is you know uh, he is in in a dilemma sort of okay then his mouth is drying up his whole body is shaking trembling his hair is standing on the end his hands his gandiva bow is slipping from his hand and in his skin is burning his legs he is because of impatience uh, you know his legs are also not able to stand any longer and in that in all these dilemmas what is he doing he is forgetting himself and his mind is reeling and he sees only causes of misfortune so now the next shlokas will be speaking in this shloka primarily his you know limbs are quivering or his mouth is drying and his you know body is trembling so then in this 28th shloka the the shila prabhupad gives very nice thing in the purport okay these points are taken from the purport i'm not saying anything outside shila prabhupad's purport he is saying that what are the causes of compassion so there are different view points so compassion due to soft heartedness of a pure devotee also can be there and that is why you know that shloka i said hara bhakta kutasa from the fifth chapter sorry fifth canto of the 18th chapter so anybody who has unflinching devotion to the supreme lord all lovely qualities or good qualities will manifest in that particular person in contrast to this a non devotee how much ever advanced he may be in education or culture he will uh, he will not have or he will lack godly qualities why he will lack godly qualities because he is hovering on the mental plane so anybody is hovering on the mental plane he is certain to be attracted by a glaring energy maya ko vashibhut hi hota hai wo जो कोई भी मन के स्तर पे घूम रहा है तो ही विल बी एक्चुअली यू नो हुवरिंग ऑन द मेंटल प्लेन ओनली सो नाउ व्हाट डज दिस इंडिकेट दिस पर्टिकुलर कंपैशन दैट इज देयर दैट अर्जुना इज नॉट ओनली सिंपैथेटिक टू हिज पार्टी बट अर्जुना इज सिंपैथेटिक टू बोथ द पार्टीज इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट दैट ओके यू नो आई विल जस्ट ट्राई टू सेव माय मैन एंड लेट द अदर मेन गो टू हेल Oh, I don't care about them. No, he has compassion for both the parties. Now, this is compassion due to soft-heartedness of a pure devotee. There is a false compassion also due to material fear. That is, you know, loss of life. So, in the subsequent, the 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 next shloka, we will see that uh, uh, he has a very uh, you know material conception of life, and. Uh, false compassion uh, will because of material fear uh, it will actually always give you impatience because he was not able to stay on the battlefield weakness of mind why weakness of mind when the, the mind is weak you forget your own self in the sense that you forget that who am i from where have i come and what is my relationship with the lord you forget your own self that okay i am not this body but i am the soul you forget this very you know thing uh, when you have weakness of mind 
and when you have weakness of mind or you have uh, you know material fear then you will have excessive attachment to material things bhautik cheezon mein bahut aghad aa sakti hai aapki and this is putting a man in such a bewildered condition because if somebody is too much attached so about attachment we'll be seeing in the you know second uh, chapter also of the bhagavad gita that where krishna is uh, giving the solution that if somebody is too attached to something how he can be detached from certain things so now this particular material attachment puts a person into a bewildered condition and uh, that is why uh, there is a, a false compassion and there is a true compassion false compassion is due to material fear and true compassion is because of the soft heartedness uh, of a devotee of a pure devotee so let's let's go and see the next shloka वेपत्थुश्च शरीरे मे रोम हर्ष जायते गांडीव संस्रते हस्ताधयते मै होल बॉडी इज ट्रेवलिंग मै हेर इज स्टैंडिंग ऑन एंड मै बो गांडीव स्लिपिंग फ्रॉम मै हैंड एंड मै स्किन इज बर्निंग दर आर टू काइंड ऑफ ट्रेवलिंग ऑफ दि बॉडी एंड द टू काइंड ऑफ स्टैंडिंग ऑफ दि हेयर ऑन एंड such phenomena occur either in great spiritual ecstasy or out of great fear under material conditions there is no fear in transcendental realization arjuna symptom in this situation are out of material fear as i discussed namely loss of life and this advent from other symptoms also he became so impatient that his famous bow gandiva was slipping from his hands and because his heart was burning within him he was feeling a burning sensation of the skin all all these are due to material conception life you all must have definitely you know experienced this you know the feeling of uh, the burning sensation of the skin so uh, i i remember i at least used to have all this burning sensation of skin whenever i used to go to write my examinations because i always had a fear that whether i'll be able to recall all the you know answers that i have uh, mugged up <laughs> so i have all, i have experienced this i'm sure you all also must have experienced this that somebody is in some stress or something something wrong has happened and uh, uh, you know he becomes very much uh, you know in anxiety and uh, there is a lot of feeling of a burning sensation of the skin and prabhupada as i told you is actually comparing the material fear and the uh, spiritual fear and he saying that uh, in spirituality there is nothing you know uh, fear as such there is spiritual ecstasy ecstasy means what bahut zyada bhautik sorry adhyatmik anand hai usme to jab aap आध्यात्मिक आनंद में होते हो तो आप बिल्कुल यू नो आप बहुत ही एक्सटेसी इन द सेंस यू आर वेरी वेरी मच हैप्पी लेकिन इसके विपरीत जो है ऑपोजिट टू दिस इज दैट ऑपोजिट टू द स्पिरिचुअल एक्सटेसी दैट दैट इफ यू आर नॉट इन एक्सटेसी देन यू आर इन ग्रेट फ्यूअर ऑल्सो एंड दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस मटीरियल कंडीशन दीज मटीरियल कंडीशन आर बिकॉज ऑफ द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर ऑल्सो and plus whatever actions we have done a lot many factors are uh, involved in this material condition so okay so now the 30th one na cha na cha shaknomi avasthutam brahma teva cha me mana nimittane cha pashyame vibitane cha keshava now i'm unable to stand here any longer i'm forgetting myself and my mind is reeling i see only causes of misfortune of krishna killer of the kc demon disha please read this purport purport by shrila prabhupad 
Due to his impatience, Arjuna was unable to stay on the battlefield and he was forgetting himself on account of this weakness of his mind. Excessive attachment for material things puts a man in such a bewildering condition of existence. Bhayam dvitya abhinivesh sata shyat Bhagavatam Canto 11 Chapter 2 Text 37 such fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium take place in persons who are too affected by material conditions. Arjuna envisioned only painful re reverses in the battlefield. He would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foe. The words nimittani vipari, viparitani are significant. When a man sees only frustration in his expectations, he thinks, why am I here? Everyone is interested in himself and his own welfare. No one is interested in the supreme self. Arjuna is showing ignorance of his real self-interest by Krishna's will. One's real self-interest lies in Vishnu or Krishna. The conditioned souls forgets this and therefore suffers material pains. Arjuna thought that his victory in the battlefield would only be a cause of lamentation for him. Hare Krishna. Yeah. We'll just conclude with this particular shloka and if somebody has any doubts, we'll just solve them out. So in this particular uh, shloka, if you see, there are many, many, uh, you know, vital points discussed in this particular shloka. So uh, over here, in this particular 30th shloka, what they are saying is, just give me a minute, okay. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, am I on the normal mode or what? Okay, video is off by mistake. Okay, in this particular 30th shloka, what they are trying to say over here in the shloka is that, <clears throat> uh, he says that the causes of fearfulness. So he says, Bhayam Dvitiya Abhinivesha Chyata. So, uh, such fearfulness or loss of equilibrium takes place in a person which is too much affected with material conditions. So that is why you will have fear. And uh, so now if I don't want to be in this material condition, okay, just give me one minute. I'll just show you that particular shloka where they say that uh, if you want to be out of uh, this fear, how to come out of fear? It was eleven to thirty seven, right? Yeah. You are able to see the screen? No. Okay. I'll just share the screen. Okay. So he says over here, let's read the translation. He says, fear arises when a living entity misidentifies himself as the material body because of absorption in the external illusionary energy of the Lord. When the living entity thus turns away from the Supreme Lord, he also forgets his own constitutional position as a servant of the Lord. Thus, bewildering, fearful condition is affected by the potency of for by the potency for illusion called Maya. Therefore, an intelligent person should engage unflinchingly in the unalloyed devotional service of the Lord under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, whom he should accept as his worshipable deity and as his very life and soul. So, now we know the cause of fear that when I'm misidentifying myself with the body, then I'm always fearful. But opposite to this, if I am, I am uh, rendering unflinchingly, unflinchingly means what with full faith, I am executing service to the Lord or I am serving the Lord under the guidance of a spiritual master, then I do not have any fear. 
And that is why if you see in the Bhagavatam that it says uh, in the first canto, seventh chapter, seventh shloka or yeah, seventh shloka. Yasya Vaishruna Maya Nam Krishna Param Purushe Bhaktir Utpadate Pumsa Shoka Moha Bhayapaha. Anybody who's reading this transcendental literature will be first getting rid of three things Shoka, Moha, and Bhaya. Shoka means what? Lamentation. Moha means what? Anxiety. And Bhaya means what? Fear. Anybody who is taking shelter of the Supreme Personality and Lauded, he will forever get rid of these three things. And if we see in our own lives, okay, we are primarily surrounded by these three fears only. I have, I am lamenting, either I am lamenting of the past or I have anxiety about the future. Okay. Or uh, I have fear about the future that what will happen in the future? What will, you know, will I be able to get a job or not? Will I be able to do this or not? Or will I be able to do that or not? So a lot of fears we have. And that is why when we take the shelter of the Lord that we know that we are in safe, just as for example, does a small child who is dependent on his mother have any sort of fear? No, why? Because he's completely dependent on his mother, right? He does not have any fear. He's very much secured in the mother's arms. Similarly, when the living entity completely surrenders to his eternal mother, the Lord, the, the Lord will give him complete protection. This is what is assured in this Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter. Last week, Krishna is giving assurance that please abandon all types of religion and please come to me. I guarantee you that I will free you from all the sins that you have done. Please do not fear at all. And again, there also Ma Sucho word. Krishna is saying that if you surrender to me, then Ma Sucho, you don't have to fear at all. So this is what uh, is the meaning of this particular shloka. Anybody has any doubts, queries, or any reflections you all want to share? You all are most welcome to share. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Uh, I have a doubt between, as you said in the shloka 25, super soul and soul, about the Lord himself and our Atma. Yes, yes. So super soul accompanies our soul everywhere. Yes. So what happens when we are on the deathbed or we are dying? That time also the super soul is there with you. Then so uh, As soon as your soul comes out from the body and it is going into another body also, that time also the super soul is accompanying you. That's why I said that super soul does not leave you even for one billionth of a second. One nanosecond also, the, the super soul will never leave you. Okay. Yeah, got your board. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions anybody has? Hare Krishna Mataji. In yes. today's class, you mentioned about uh, Indra and Brahma, how Krishna has uh, 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 taken out their ego. So I forgot the Brahma story. Could you remind me of that? Yeah, you remember that, uh, Lord, uh, you know, uh, if you must have seen the little Krishna, you know, cartoon. Over there in that, Lord Brahma, originally, the Lord, when he descended in Dwarka, uh, in Dwapar Yuga, so the Lord had descended on the request of Brahma only because there was too much of uh, chaos and commotion made by Kamsa. And he was putting uh, too many atrocities on the uh, earthly people. And that is why uh, all the demigods, they went to Brahma. Brahma and all, they went to Lord Vishnu and they requested him. And they all went to Krishna. Then Krishna said, okay, I will descend personally, you know, in my original form in uh, Dwapar Yuga. And I will kill Kamsa. So now 
Brahma only had requested that Krishna, you please come. And uh, he knew that, okay, Krishna is coming in, you know, Vrindavan only, but he forgot. He also got illusioned. He was also the, under the spell of Maya or illusion. So then he's thinking, okay, how is this uh, little boy who is eating with his friends and he's eating the remnant he cannot be the supreme lord so then he tries to test the supreme lord and uh, he you know you know that that story that uh, then he actually you know steals the calves and coward boys of uh, brahma brahma tries to steal the coward boys of krishna and only krishna is left otherwise everybody is actually taken away so now krishna knows this so when you see that Brahma has stolen the cows and the calves and the coward boys of uh, Krishna and he has placed them in Brahmaloka. And over here, when he turns back and he sees within a nanosecond over here, he sees, he sees that those cows and coward boys are still there only. He said, oh, where are these? I have stolen them. But then when he sees over there, he sees that they are here also and they are there also simultaneously in both the places they are there. And those exactly like, you know, Krishna expanded himself. Bhagavan ne apna vistar kiya tha. Unke exact roop mein, in their exact form also. And uh, that's how, you know, uh, Indra and Brahma also get bewildered with uh, Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. I remembered now. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. So, thank you very much, everybody. Let's meet on next Wednesday. Thank you so much for helping me read the Bhagavad Gita and helping remember the Lord. I'm always uh, grateful to everybody who's attending these classes that they're helping me also purify myself. Hare Krishna. Hare Paul. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Mataji, are you also teaching Bhagavatam? Yeah, we are just having a Bhagavatam at 9.15 right now. Every day, Monday to Friday, Bhagavatam <coughs> reading and a little explanation also I give a free course. So, if you want to join in that group, you just put me a personal message on the same Bhagavad Gita group. I'll add you in the Bhagavatam reading group also. The ID remains the same for all my classes. So, 9 to... What, 9 to 10. 9 15 to 10, only 45 minutes. Monday to Friday. Yeah, Monday to Friday. Add me, ma'am. Uh, I can send you. Sure. I'll just uh, put you my number. That's my uh, that's my WhatsApp number. You can just put me a Hare Krishna. Add me in the ASP group. I'll add you in the ASP group. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So those who want to still remain and, uh, you know, continue Hare with... Krishna, Mata. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Hare Krishna. You all can continue uh, in this class. Uh, no problem because immediately we are doing a Bhagavatam reading session on a daily basis. The class remains the same. Only the students keep changing. <laughs> okay. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Narocheva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojaya Mudire Nashta Prayeshu Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Rabhavati Neshtaki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha So I'll just share the screen with everybody. We had halted over here, Disha, yesterday. Yes, Mataji. Text 48. Uh, we have to begin with text 48. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Just give me one minute, okay? I'll just put a reminder for the others also. They might be thinking that there's no class. Okay, so this chapter is entitled uh, the, the Son of Drona Punished. So we're talking about Ashwatthama in this uh, chapter. Ye kopitam brahma kulam rajan nir ajitam abhi tat kulam pradhantyashu sanu bandha sucharpitam. So, who will read? Vaishnavi, please do the opening translation and purport. Yes, Mataji. Translation: If if the uh, if the kingly administrative order, being unrestricted in sense control, offends the Brahmana order and enrages them, then the fire of that rage burns up the whole body of the royal family and brings grief upon them all. Purport, the Brahmana order of society or the spirituality advanced caste or community and the members of such highly elevated families were Mataji Yeah, now you able to see were always held No Huh, now you'll be able to see. Okay, I'll just read. Were always held in great esteem by the other subordinate caste, namely the administrative kingly order, the mercantile order and the laborers. So in this particular thing where they're saying that, uh, you know, just a general description of the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, and they're given that Brahmanas hold a very higher uh, status then come the Kshatriyas, then the Vaishyas, and then the Shudras. Suta Uvacha Dharma Nyayam Sakurana Nirvya Lika Samamahat Raja Dharma Suto Ragya Pradhan Nyadvacha Dvijaha Yeah, read Vaishnavi this translation and the purport both. Translation Sutta Goswami said, O Brahmanas, King Yudhishthira fully supported the statements of the queen, which were in accordance with the principles of religion and were justified, glorious, full of mercy and equity and without duplicity. Purport Maharaj Yudhishthira, who was the son of Dharmaraj, or Yamaraj fully supported the words of Queen Draupadi in asking Arjuna to release Ashwatthama. One should not one should not tolerate the humiliation of a member of a great family. Arjuna and his family were indebted to the family of Dronacharya because of Arjuna's learning the military science from him. If in if ingratitude were shown to such a benevolent family, it would not be at all justified from the moral standpoint. The wife, the wife of a Dronacharya, who was the half body of the great soul, must be treated with compassion, and she should not be put into grief because of her son's death. That is compassion. Such statements by Draupadi are without duplicity because actions should be taken with full knowledge. The feeling of equality was there because Draupadi uh, Dra uh, spoke out of her personal experience. A barren woman cannot understand the grief of a mother. Draupadi was herself a mother and therefore her calculation of the depth of Kripi's grief was quite to the point. And it was glorious because she wanted to show proper respect to a great family. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So this Ashwatthama's mother's name is Kripi. Okay. And if Ashwatthama would be killed, then his mother Kripi would be in grief. Now, if you see over here, uh, 
in the beginning of the kurukshetra war arjuna is showing compassion he is showing compassion to both the parties so pure devotee will always have uh, you know compassion towards other living entities and over here when ashvatthama is supposed to be punished because he had released the brahmastra to kill the child in the womb of uttara now draupadi is also showing compassion draupadi is showing compassion even in the sense that he, he though he killed the five sons of draupadi she is still saying that no no he is the son of a brahmana he is the son of our uh, kul guru he is uh, the son of uh, kripi so these are some uh, you know reasons she is giving that why should ashwatthama not be killed because of her own uh, compass- compassionate nature and uh, she was not duplicit because uh, uh, she was uh, saying that uh, everything has to be any decision that has to be taken then that has to be actually taken with full knowledge and that is why she was uh, feeling that uh, you know uh, that uh, ashwatthama should not be killed in any case nakula sahadevascha yuyudhano dhananjaya bhagwan devaki putra ye channe yascha yoshita nakula and sade the younger brothers of the king and also sat satyaki arjuna the personality of godhead lord shri krishna son of devaki and the ladies and all others all unanimously agreed with the king so तत्र तत्र हम शिर्तो श्रेयान वद स्मृत न भ्रातुर्नाथे योहान सुप्ता शिशुन वृथ भीष्म हावर एंग्री डिसग्रीड विद देम एंड रेकमेंडेड किलिंग दिस कल्प्रेट हू हेज मर्डर्ड स्लीपिंग चिल्ड्रन फॉर नो पर्पस and for neither his nor his master's interest so bhishma was very angry he th- he said that you know this culprit should be draupadi is saying that he should not be killed but bhima is saying that he should be killed now let's see what the others have to say nishamya bhima gaditam draupad dascha chaturbhuj alok स्माइलिंग Uh, Divya Joshi Mata Ji, please read this purport. Uh, Divya Joshi Mata Ji, are you there? Mata Ji, Mata Ji, are you feeling well? Are you able to read today? Yes, Mata Ji, I am way better today. I can read. Yeah, read, read, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna, Dandavas Pranam to all of you. purport lord shri krishna had two arms and why he is designated as four arm is explained by shridhar swami both bhima and draupadi held opposite views about killing ashwatthama bhima bhima wanted him to be immediately killed whereas draupadi wanted to save him we can imagine bhima ready to kill while draupadi is obstructing him and in order to prevent both of them the lord discovered another two arms originally the primeval lord shri krishna displays only two arms but in his narayana feature he exhibits four in his narayana feature he resides with his devotees in the vaikuntha planets while in his original shri krishna feature he resides in the krishna loka planet far far above the vaikuntha planets in the spiritual sky therefore if shri krishna is called chaturbhuja there is no contradiction if need be he can display hundreds of arms 
as he exhibited in his Vishwarupa shown to Arjuna. Therefore, one who can display hundreds and thousands of arms can also manifest food whenever needed. When Arjuna was perplexed about what to do with Ashwatthama, Lord Sri Krishna, as a very dear friend of Arjuna, voluntarily took up the matter just to make a solution. And he was smiling also. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Now the Lord starts speaking, okay. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Brahma Bandur Nahantavya Atatai Vadaharan Maeva Maeva Bhaya Mamannata Paripaha Anus Sanam Kuru Pratishrutam Satyam Yatat Santo Vyayata Priyam Priyam Chabhishma Senyasya Panchalya Mahayam Evacha So Rupa, please read this uh, translation and purport. Hare Krishna. The personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna said, a friend of a Brahmana is not to be killed, but he, if he is an aggressor, he must be killed. All these rulings are in the scriptures and you would act accordingly. You have to fulfill your promise to your wife and you must also act to the satisfaction of the Bhimasena and me. Purport. Arjuna was perplexed because Aswatthama was to be killed as well as spared according to different scriptures cited by different persons. As a Brahma Bandhu or a worthless son of the Brahmana, Aswatthama was not to be killed, but he was the but he was at the same time an aggressor also. And according to the rulings of Man an aggressor, even though he be a Brahmana and what to speak of an unworthy son of Brahmana is to be killed. Dronacharya was certainly a Brahmana in the true sense of term, in the true sense of the term. But because he stood in the battlefield, he was killed. But although Aswatthama was an aggressor, he stood without any fighting weapons. The ruling is that an aggressor, when he is without a weapon or chariot, cannot be killed. All these were certainly perplexities. Besides that, Arjuna had to keep the promise he had made before Draupadi just to pacify her. And he also had to satisfy both Bhima and Krishna who advised killing him. This dilemma was present before Arjuna and the solution was awarded by Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much. Nicely read. Suta Uvacha Arjuna Sahasanjaya Hare Hardam Athasina Maninim Jahara Murdhayam Vijasya Samha Saham Murdhamjam Shri Sudh Goswami said, Just then Arjuna could understand the motive of the Lord. By his equal orders, and thus with his sword, he severed both hair and jewel from the head of Ashwatthama. So now actually Arjuna slashed Ashwatthama. Hmm. Uh, Amita Madhaji, please read this purport. Purport, Hare Krishna. Contradictory orders of different persons are impossible to carry out. Therefore, a compromise was selected by Arjuna by his sharp intelligence. And he separated the jewel from the head of Ashwatthama. This was as good as cutting off his head. And yet his life was saved for all practical purposes. Here Ashwatthama is indicated as twice born. Certainly he was twice born, but he fell down from his position and therefore he was properly punished. So uh, Arjuna again being compassionate, he did not slash the head of, uh, of Ashwatthama. But what did he do? He separated the jewel that was there at Ashwatthama's head. He actually just, uh, you know, slashed it down. <clears throat> Vimucha rasana badham bala hatya hata prabham tejasa mani nam hinam 
शिबिरान शिबिरापत Shiva Prabhu, please read the translation and purport. Ye Ashwatthama had already lost his bodily luster due to the band by. Ah, uh, we are not able to hear you. Ah, uh, we are not able to hear you. Translation. Ashwatthama had already lost his bodily luster due to infanticide, and now, moreover, having lost the jewel from his head, he lost even more strength. Thus, he was unbound and driven out of the camp. Purport. Thus, being insulted, the humiliated Ashwatthama was simultaneously killed and not killed by the intelligence of Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. वपन द्रविणा दान स्थान निरापना तथा एष ही ब्रह्म बंधूना वधो न्यान्यो स्थित दैखिक कटिंग दि हेयर फ्रॉम हिज हेड डिप्राइविंग हिम ऑफ हिज वेल्थ एंड ड्राइविंग हिम फ्रॉम हिज रेसिडेंस आर द प्रिस्क्राइब पनिशमेंट फॉर द रिलेटिव ऑफ अ ब्राह्मणा there is no injunction for killing of the body so if a brahmana is making some severe offences then what is the solution either his hair, hair should be cut from his head or depriving him from his wealth you know you, his wealth should be taken away and you know distributed to the poor or driving him for his uh, from his residence means what you can just push him out of his residence and maybe he could be you know push somewhere else Are the prescribed punishment for the uh, the relative of a brahmana. So this punishment is there in the shastras. Putra shoka tu ra sarve pandava sah Krishna ya swanamritan swanamritanam yad krutyam chakur nihar na dikam. Thereafter, the sons of Pandu and Draupadi, overwhelmed with the grief, perform the proper rituals for the dead bodies of their relatives. Thus, the uh, thus ends the Bhakti Vedan purport. So, the first canto, seventh chapter of the Shrimad Bhagavatam, entitled "The Son of Drona Punished." So, now we'll be starting with the eighth chapter. This eighth chapter is very, 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 very important. If you see, Shri Prabhupada has written one full book. on this whole eighth chapter the prayers of queen kunti or the teachings of queen kunti uh, that uh, prabhupad is given and this this particular book in those days used to be you know sold like hot cakes and this this book in those times was so much in demand so whole book has been written on this and such wonderful and beautiful lessons to learn from the prayers of queen kunti now if you see there are many prayers in the bhagavatam somebody might ask that uh, what should i pray the lord i don't know how to pray to the lord please teach me how to pray to the lord so now if somebody wants to learn how to pray to the lord then prayers bhagavatam is filled with many many prayers uh, prayers of the demigods prayers of queen kunti prayers of prallad maharaj dhruv maharaj and prayers of the sages so many prayers even brahma when he lamented he prayed even indra prayed so there are many many prayers in the bhagavatam and maybe if we do not know how to pray to the lord then we can take inspiration from these great souls that how to pray to the lord even bhishma the next chapter will be bhishma is actually praying to the lord the ninth chapter speaks about bhishma so with this uh, great enthusiasm let's start with this particular chapter prayers of queen kunti and parikshit saved in the womb suta uvacha athate sampare tanam swanam udakam 
उदकम इच्छताम दातुम स कृष्णा गंगायाम पुरुषकृत्य ययु स्त्रिय तो सुशील प्रभु प्लीज रीड द ट्रांसलेशन एंड द पर्पट translation so am prabhu we cannot hear you starting to that they went to the ganges with draupadi the ladies walked in front for port today it is custom in hindu society to go to the ganges or any other sacred river to take their द्रौपदी today it is custom in hindu society to go to the ganges or any other sacred river to take bath when death occurs in the family each of the family members pours out a pot full of the of the ganges water for the departed soul and walks in a procession with the ladies in the front the pandavas also followed the rules more than 5000 years ago lord krishna being a cousin of the pandavas was also amongst the family members thank you prabhu ji thank you so much in between your mic is a little uh, you know disturbed first one mata ji it is actually mobile mata ji uh, okay. no problem prabhu te nini yodakam sarve vilapya cha brusham puna aluk aplutta hari pada hari pada ja rajah puta sir ji ja jale having lamented over them and sufficiently offered ganges water they bathed in they bathed in the ganges whose water is sanctified due to being mixed with the dust of the lotus feet of the lord तत्रासीन कुरुपती धर्तराष्ट्र सहानुजम गांधारी पुत्र शोकार्था पृथा कृष्णा च माधव वृंदा प्लीज रीड दिस ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट यस ट्रांसलेशन देर सैट द किंग ऑफ द कुरुस महाराज युधिष्ठिर अलोंग विथ हिज यंग ब्रदर्स एंड धृतर Rashtra Gandhari Kunti and Draupadi all overwhelmed with grief. Lord Krishna was also there. But but the battle of Kurukshetra was fought between family members, and thus all affected persons were also family members like Maharaj Yudhishthir and brothers and brothers Kunti, Draupadi, Shubhadra, Dhritarashtra Gandhari, and her daughter-in-law, etc. All the principal, all the principal dead bodies were in some way or other related with each other and therefore the family grief was combined lord lord krishna was also one of them as a cousin of the pandavas and nephew of kunti as well as a brother of shubhadra etc the lord therefore was equally sympathetic towards all of them and therefore he began to pacify them uh, befittingly yes correct yeah so now the lord is actually you know uh, sympathetic and he's pacifying all the pandavas because obviously he's related to the pandavas so he's trying to pacify them santavayam asamuni bhir hata bandhun suchar pitan bhuteshu kalasya gatim darshayanna pratikriyam just one minute okay
oh this is a long puppet we'll just divide this into uh, maybe amita madhi ji you could just read half the puppet and i'll tell you where to stop okay and then from there matangi mata ji would just take up from there read amita madhi ji the translation and puppet yeah mata ji hey krishna translation um citing the stringent laws of the almighty and their reactions upon living beings lord shri krishna and the munis began to pacify those who were shocked and affected puppet the stringent laws of nature under the order of supreme personality of godhead cannot be altered by any living entity the living entities are eternally under the subjugation of the almighty lord the lord may also um, sorry ha huh. the uh, lord makes all the laws and orders and these laws and orders are generally called dharma or religion no one can create any religious formula bona fide uh, religion is to be is to abide by the orders of the lord the lord's order are clearly declared in the bhagavad gita everyone should follow him and only and only or his orders and this will this will make all happy both materially and spiritually as long as we are in material world our duty is to follow the orders of the lord and if by the grace of the lord we are liberated from the clutches of the material world then in our liberated stage also we can render transcendental loves loving service onto the lord yeah our... uh, let matangi mataji start from here okay. thank you hare krishna thank you hare krishna in our material stage we can see neither ourselves nor the lord for want of spiritual vision but when we are liberated from material affection and are situated in our original spiritual form we can see both ourselves and the lord face to face mukti means to be reinstated in one's original spiritual status after giving up the material conception of life therefore human life is specifically meant for qualifying ourselves for the spiritual liberty unfortunately under the influence of illusory material energy and material energy we accept this spot life of only a few years as our permanent existence and thus become illusion by possessing so called country home land children wife community wealth etc which are false representations created by maya illusion and under the dictation of maya we fight with one another to protect these false possessions by cultivating spiritual knowledge we can realize that we have nothing to do with all this material paraphernalia then at once we become free from material attachment this clearance of the misgivings of material existence at once takes place by association with the lord's devotees who are able to inject the transcendental sound into the depths of the bewildered heart and thus make one practically liberated from all lamentation and illusion that is a summary of the pacifying pacifying measures for those affected by the reaction of stringent material laws exhibited in the forms of birth death old age and disease which are insoluble factors of material existence the victims of war namely the family members of the kurus were lamenting the problems of death and the lord pacified them on the basis of knowledge thank you hare krishna yeah thank you mata ji thank you so much matangi mata ji was my neighbor previously now she shifted to chennai so we are still connected with each other through the bhagavatam <laughs> bhagavatam is connecting us sadhayitva jashat jat shatro swarajya kitah vai hatam ghatayitsva its it uh, sorry ghatayit किंगडम ऑफ युधिष्ठिरा हु हैड नो एनिमी बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ द लॉर्ड द रिकवरी वॉज एक्सिक्यूटेड एंड द अनस्कल्परस किंग्स हु जॉइंड विद दुर्योधन वर किल्ड बाय हिम Others also died. Their duration of life having decreased for their rough handling of the hair of Queen Draupadi. So now actually uh, there is a protection part coming up. So Disha, 
प्लीज रीड दिस होल पोपट यस माता जी पोपट बाय श्रीला प्रभुपाद इन द ग्लोरियस डेज और बिफोर द एडवेंट ऑफ द एज ऑफ कली the brahmanas the cows the women the children and the old men were properly given protection the protection of the brahmanas maintains the institution of varna and ashrama the most scientific culture for attainment of spiritual life the protection of cows maintains the most miraculous form of food that is milk for maintaining the finer tissues of the brain for understanding higher aims of life the protection of women maintains the chastity of society by which we can get a good generation for peace tranquility and progress of life the protection of children gives the human form of life its best chance to prepare the way of liberty from material bondage such protection of children begins from the very day of we getting a child by the purifac by the purificatory process of gar padana samskara the beginning of pure life the protection of the old men gives them a chance to prepare themselves for better life after death this complete outlook is based on factors leading to successful humanity as against the civilization of polished cats and dogs the killing of the above mentioned innocent creatures is totally forbidden because even by insulting them one loses one's duration of life in the age of kali they are not properly protected and therefore the duration of life of the present generation has shortened considerably in the bhagavad gita it is stated that when the women become unchaste for want of proper protection there are unwanted children called varna sankara to insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life dushasan a brother of duryodhan insulted draupadi an idle chaste lady and therefore the miscreants died untimely these are some of the stringent laws of the lord mentioned above hari krishna uh, this is a very important purport do you see that where the lord is saying that uh, who all should be given protection brahmana should be prote- protected uh, because they maintain you know the institution of varna and ashrama they are uh, meant to uh, impart spiritual knowledge then cows should be protected why because whenever we are drinking the milk of the cow the finer tissues in our brains they are helping us understanding the higher aims of life jaise when you say you know in hindi ki bhais ka doodh piyoge to bhais ki buddhi aayegi then you will not understand uh, you know the higher philosophy or the higher aims of life that okay i have an aim in life that i want to worship the supreme lord then protection of the women also if women are not enough protected then what will happen is that there will be prostitutes moving all around they will lose their chastity wo apni pavitrata kho denge aur fir aage wali jo praja aayegi ya the the next progeny that will be there from their womb then they will also be like varna shankaras only they will also be uh, you know moving around here and there aimlessly so they will also not have chastity and then that you know series keeps on going or the lineage keeps on going and then they saying that protection of children children should be protected from uh, uh, you know from right from the beginning age from the womb they should be given some nice samskara so that they can connect with the supreme lord and the protection of old people is giving them a chance to prepare themselves for better life after death old people specially even uh, should be given so much of uh, you know protection that uh, protection in the sense old people don't demand so much like i'm seeing my own parents what they're demanding nothing they're demanding they're just giving they're demanding some part of uh, or some time maybe one or two hours of yours or they're demanding that okay you sit with us and you talk and chit chat with us or you just read with us like me and my parents we read uh, the bhagavad gita every day or some other ramayan something we read it every day like how i'm reading with you all i'm reading with my parents also so 
and check this out you know any of these people if they insulted this particular you know so nice that if the killing of the above innocent creatures is totally forbidden because even by insulting any one of them one loses duration of life ayur harati vai pumsa so ayur har legi aapki ayu har lega if you insult any of these either you insult a brahmana you insult a cow insulting a cow means killing the cow if you are uh, insulting a woman if you are insulting old people especially you know nowadays the generation is such that uh, children insult their parents so very easily or grandchildren also insult their grandfathers and grandmothers so very easily why because they are seeing it from their parents the parents are not giving so much of respect to the their own parents so the grandchildren will also not give so much respect so these things uh, you know bhagavatam is teaching these are all application part so for example today if we are insulting anybody of them what lesson will, will are we learning that we should not insult even in our actions what to speak about in words not even in our actions we should insult any one of these five right okay so this is the take away for you know this particular purport let's check the next purport yad jitva ashvamedhastam tribhir uttam kalpake tad yasya pavanam dikshu shatam manyor ivantanot Uh, Rupa Mataji, please read this whole translation and purport. Hare Krishna. Lord Sri Krishna caused three well-performed Ashwamedha Yajnas, horse sacrifices, to be conducted by Maharaja Yudhishthira and thus caused his victorious fame to be glorified in all directions, like that of Indra, who had performed 100 such sacrifices. Purport. This is something like the preface to the performances of Ashwa, Ashwamedha Yajna by Maharaja Yudhishthira. The comparison of Maharaja Yudhishthira is to the comparison of Maharaja Yudhishthira to the king of heaven is significant. The king of heaven is thousands and thousands of times greater than Maharaja Yudhishthira in opulence. Yet the fame of Maharaja Yudhishthira was not less. The reason is that Maharaja Yudhishthira was a pure devotee of the Lord. And by his grace only was the king Yudhishthira on the level of the king of heaven, even though he performed only three yajnas, whereas the king of heaven performed hundreds. That is the prerogative of the devotee of the Lord. The Lord is equal to everyone, but a devotee of the Lord is more glorified because he is always in touch with the all grades. The sun rays are equally distributed, but still there are some places which are always dark. This is not due to the sun, but to the receptive power. Similarly, those who are sent person devotees of the Lord get the full-fledged mercy of the Lord, which is always equally distributed everywhere. Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much. Amantraya Pandukutram Sha सेन योद्धव संयुत द्वैपयान्य निधिभीर विप्रहे पूजितां प्रति पूजितम लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण देन प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर हिज डिपार्चर ही इनवाइटेड द सन्स ऑफ पांडु आफ्टर हैविंग बीइंग वर्शिप्ड बाय द ब्राह्मणस हेडेड बाय श्री व्यासदेव द लॉर्ड आल्सो रेसिप्रोकेटेड द ग्रीटिंग्स Oh, this is a small purport. I could have asked somebody to do it. Vrinda, please read this purport. Yeah. Apparently, Lord Sri Krishna was a Kshatriya and was not worshipable by the Brahmanas. But the Brahmanas present there, headed by Sri Vyasadeva, all knew him to be the personality of Godhead and therefore they worshipped him. The Lord reciprocated the greetings just to honor the social order that a Kshatriya is obedient 
to the orders of the Brahmanas. Although Lord Sri Krishna was always offered the respects due to the Supreme Lord from all responsible quarters, the Lord never deviated from the customary um, usages between the four orders of society. The Lord purposely observed all these social customs so that others would follow him in the future. Hare Krishna. So, uh, Lord Sri Krishna is always showing respect towards Yudhishthir or because Yudhishthir is elder to him. Okay. And he is always showing respect to the Brahmanas. He is uh, always uh, showing respect to Shri Dev. So, whatever the codes of uh, respect were there, uh, the Lord completely always followed them. He did not shirk away from these social customs. Gantam Kritamatir Brahman Dwarakam Rathamastita Upalebi Bhavatim Uttaram Bhayavi Vivahalam. As soon as he seated himself on the chariot to start for Dwarka, he saw Uttara hurrying towards him in fear. So now actually Uttara is coming in scene over here that uh, now she is actually bowing down to the Lord and what she will speak. Let's see. Uh, Vaishnavi, please read this purport. Yes, Mataji. All the members of the family of the Pandavas were completely dependent on the protection of the Lord. And therefore, the Lord protected all of them in all circumstances. The Lord protects everyone, but one who depends completely upon him is especially looked after by the Lord. The father is more attentive to the little son who is exclusively dependent on the father. Yeah, thank you so much. Uttarovachana, Uttara is speaking, okay, that is where Uttarovacha. Pahi Pahi Mahayogin Deva Deva Jagatpate Nanyam Tvadbhayam Pashe Yatra Mrityu Parasparam. So now Uttara is actually going to speak over here. Uh, Amita Mataji, please read the translation and the purport. Hare Krishna. Uh, Mataji, can, uh, I can't see the translation. Uh, now you can you see the translation? Ha, ha, yeah, yes, Mataji, thank you. Translation, Uttara said, O Lord of Lords, Lord of the Universe, you are the greatest of mystics. Please protect me, protect me. For there is no one else who can save me from the clutches of death in this world of duality. Purport. This material world is the world of duality in contrast with the oneness of the absolute realm. The world of duality is composed of matter and spirit, whereas the absolute world is complete spirit without any tinge of the material qualities. In the dual world, everyone is falsely trying to become the master of the world. Whereas in the absolute world, the world is the, the Lord is the absolute Lord and all others are his absolute servitors. In the world of duality, everyone is envious of all others and death is inevitable due to the dual existence of matter and spirit. The Lord is the only shelter of fearlessness for the surrendered soul. One cannot save himself from the cruel hands of death in material world without having surrendered himself at the lotus feet of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Okay, now she's actually praying to the Lord. Okay. Abhidraveta mamisha saras tapas tapatya so vibho kamam daha tu mam natha mame garbho nipatyatam. Oh, who will read this just in a moment? Vaishnavi Mataji, please read this whole translation and purport. Yes, Mataji. Translation, O oh my Lord, you are all powerful. A, a fiery iron arrow is coming towards me fast. My Lord, 
let it burn me personally if you so desire but please do not let it burn and abort my eyebrow uh, no. abort my embryo uh. please do me this favor my lord purport this incident took place after the death of abhimanyu the husband of uttara abhimanyu's widow uttara should have followed the path of her husband but because she was pregnant and maharaja parikshit a great devotee of the lord was lying in embryo she was responsible for his protection the mother of a child has a great responsibility in giving all protection to the child and therefore uttara was not ashamed to express this frankly before lord shri krishna uttara was the daughter of a great king the wife of a great hero and student of a great devotee and later she was the mother of a good king also she was fortunate in every respect yeah so now this is the whole character of uttara in this particular paragraph now mother ji what is the uttara's uh, father's name uh uttara got married to uttara's father's name Just forget. Maybe I'll just put it on the WhatsApp group. Uttara's father name. I'll just find out from the Mahabharat, and I'll tell you what. I just don't remember the father's name currently. Sure, Mata Ji. Yeah. Suta uva cha upadharya vachastasya Bhagavan bhakta vatsala a Pandavam idam kartum. सुशील प्रभु प्लीज रीड दिस होल ट्रांसलेशन अरे ट्रांसलेशन सुतर गोस्वामी सैड हैविंग पेशेंटली हर्ड हर वर्ड्स Lord Krishna, who is always very affectionate to his devotees, could at once understand that Ashtama, the son of Dronacharya, had thrown the Brahmastra to finish the last life in the Pandava family. Purport: The Lord is impartial in every respect, but still He is inclined towards His devotees because there is a great necessity for the of these for everyone's well-being. The Pandava family was a family of devotees. and therefore the lord wanted them to rule the world that was the reason he vanquished the rule of the company of duryodhana and established the rule of maharaja yudhishthira therefore he also wanted to protect maharaja parikshit who was lying in the embryo he did not like the idea that the world should be without the pandavas the ideal family of devotees hari krishna yeah so this is something so very nice that uh, 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 you know see this is the characters of krishna that lord shri krishna who is always affectionate to his devotees could at once understand ashwatthama you know the son of drona who is actually come so lord is impartial to in every respect but still he is inclined towards his devotees uh, because there is a great necessity for this for everyone's well being and pandavas being you know pure devotee and they're going to uh, you know the law see this was the lord's desire that uh, the pandavas rule the world okay he wanted yudhishthira to be established on the throne because uh, they all were pious and they were all uh, men of uh, great valor they were pure devotees of the lord and that is why uh he actually vanquished this duryodhana's rule and he is establishing yudhishthira rule why because duryodhana represents a dharma and yudhishthira represents dharma right and that is why because uh, now parikshit maharaj is the uh, last lineage or the last uh, you know person left in that particular family now the lord will definitely save parikshit maharaj in the womb of uttara and uh, he will also the lord also did not like this idea that you know 
this world should be without the pandavas who are actually idle devotees so that is why now these are some of the reasons that krishna wants to save uh, parikshit maharaj in the womb of uttara okay so i think we will stop over here we'll continue from uh, shloka number 12 okay and uh, we'll see tomorrow some more finer points and all so yeah disha is right that uh, uttara's father's name is king virat absolutely thank you so much and yes even amita mata ji thank you so much that uttara's father's name is king virat okay yeah thank you shila prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakt vrind ji ki jai we we'll meet tomorrow at 9:15 hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna krishna